Welcome back everyone. So Dolly 3 is here and it is groundbreaking for stock photographers. Well, groundbreaking may not be the word, but it is <laughs> a big deal for stock photographers. So if you don't know, Dolly was a generative image AI by OpenAI and this was Dolly 2 and it was okay, but I didn't consider um, Dolly 2 to be anything near um, what Mid Journey is, for example. Compared to Mid Journey, Dolly 2 was, well, child's play. <laughs> the, the quality was just not on par with what Mid Journey was putting out um, at the time. However, we have Dolly 3 now, and I can say confidently that Dolly 3 is on par with the image quality that Mid Journey puts out, and that is a big deal. Um, so, what really separates Dolly 3 from Mid Journey? Well, Dolly 3 is able to incorporate text into its generation, and that's something that Mid Journey cannot do. For example, if you were to say generate an image with the word Valentine's Day in the image, da, uh, Mid Journey would not be able to do that. It would jumble the text and you would not get what you were looking for. But Dolly 3 is now able to do that. Um, Dolly 3 is, however, uh, paid at least on ChatGPT. So if you're a, a, a paid user of ChatGPT 4, then you have access, to, at least you will have access to. Uh, Dolly 3. OpenAI is slowly rolling out access to Dolly 3 and ChatGPT. But the power of this lies in the fact that it is incorporated with ChatGPT. So you can speak to it or type to it in natural language and it will generate the prompts for you. So in these examples here, if I click on this, you will see that what I asked it for, it created a prompt for that so you can see the prompt here and we can copy this prompt and we can put it into other um, image generation softwares and have it generate um, but that's that's super good <laughs> oh before I move on if you don't have uh, paid access to chat GPT then you can use uh, Bing's image create and that's it's the same thing it's as you can see here it's powered by Dolly 3 you get 100 credits per day fast credits so that means the image will, images will be created at a faster pace once you've used up all of those uh, fast credits you'll still have access to it but it will just generate a little slower um, than if you used your fast credits so specifically for us stock photographers um, this is super good that it's incorporated with ChatGPT because as we know, we already can use ChatGPT to generate titles and keywords. So now we can use it to generate the images and accompanied by the titles and keywords. So looking at these examples here, I've done just that. I asked it to you know, generate stylistic images that represent depression, anxiety, anger, and sadness and you know, uh, create a short title and 20 comma separated keywords ordered by relevancy. And it did just that. We have our title and we have 20 uh, keywords uh, separated by commas and ordered by relevancy. So now all we would have to do is just copy the titles and the keywords and, and put it into, you know, a software that can incorporate the meta into the image and then upload them to the agencies and boom. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to jump between different softwares. So let's go through that process a little. So I'm gonna click on this image here and I'm gonna download it. So download and I'm gonna open it in Topaz to upscale it. There we go. And I'm just going to say save. I'll say, what is this? Um, I'll say depression. 
and let's upscale in. All right, boom, so that's done. Let me go over to my downloads area. There it is, and I'm gonna drag it over. I already did an example previously. I'm gonna drag it over into XPix to put the keywords and stuff, and let's go back over. That was the first one, and I'll copy that and paste the keywords there. Let's go back. And I think, yeah, I wanted a, a little bit longer of titles, so I, I told it to generate longer titles, slightly longer titles. And I'm just going to put a dot at the end to just to make them different. And I think I forgot to copy the word, um, the letter I. All right, so that's good. I'm just going to select that and hit save. Start the export. If we come back over and we get the info, we can see that it's it's saved. So now all we would have to do is go over to and drag this. All right, so that's available. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna say this is a photo because it, it looks like it, it could have been taken with a real camera, so we're gonna call it a photo. Um, I'm gonna have a video coming out soon on how to go through the process of uploading AI images to um, Adobe Stock because it's changed significantly since the last time I made a video about that. So we're gonna keep it at photo. Um, state of mind, yep, I will keep that. English, um, created using generative AI tools. And importantly, the people and property are fictional. We're gonna click that. And yeah, I think that's good. We're gonna submit. We'll accept. And I just wanna submit the first one. And that's it. So if we come over to in review, you'll see that it's there. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and let's talk about incorporating text into the images, which is so amazing. Like, look at this. I, I asked it to generate images with the word Happy Valentine's Day in it, and it did just that. And they are amazing. So if we go, that's the one to look at these images guys that's <laughs> I mean you'll have the occasional mishaps and like this we can easily remove that in, in Photoshop or just have it generate another one right but that's good so coming down here I, I did generate an, an image with just a random name in it to show that it can generate words that are not common such as well names <laughs> So let me copy this. I'm going to use a different name to show you that it can do it. Let's say Scooby. <laughs> All right, let's not do Scooby. Let's do James. Generate. And there you have it. I mean, it's not the best because we have some gibberish, but easily removable. And the spacing is not the best, but we could regenerate that and, right, it's an iterative process. Um, yeah, but that's that's pretty awesome. You cannot get that in mid-journey. In fact, let's, let's copy the prompt and try it out in mid-journey. So... You can see here I did try out one of them and, you know, I, I got nothing in terms of text. Imagine. It, <laughs> one thing I hated about the interface was having to type that imagine crap all the time. 
So yeah, I don't need, even have to wait for it to finish. It, it's not gonna put James on there. Yeah, so no James anywhere. <laughs> and just just for kicks and giggles, let's put it into Dolly 2 and see what we get there. So Dolly 2 did, I mean, these are ridiculous. I would never use it, but in terms of incorporating the text, it did a far better job, at least on this one, than Mid Journey. And just to show you that Bing Create is um, powered by Dolly 3, I'm going to copy that prompt and paste it into Bing Create, and let's see what we get. Hopefully it doesn't make a fool out of me today. And look at that. Awesome. We <laughs> These are amazing, guys. I mean, look at that. Look at that one. That's pretty darn good. There we go. So yeah, this was just a quick introduction to Dolly 3. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming out about Dolly 3 and its use case in ChatGPT. So, you know, if you're into that stuff, if you're into making money with your AI images, then, you know, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and yeah, until next time, have a good one, guys.